So hello everyone, I just wanted to take a little bit of time here to talk with you about a very important question, and that's really why make maps anyway today? You know, uh, we have this historical idea of maps and the paper maps, and to some people uh, it may seem a little bit uh, quaint to be talking about cartography, especially in today's world, and I've got uh, Google Maps right up here that you can see. Uh, of course, this is a web map, and when I'm talking about doing cartography and producing maps, Typically, I am talking about static maps. This is a web map. Uh, I'm not going to be able to go into a lot of information about web mapping uh, in this introductory course. In fact, I teach uh, a whole class on web and mobile design that goes into uh, the design of web maps, like uh, Google Maps right here, uh, in specific detail on how to create them and how to design them. So we're going to be talking about uh, static maps, which are still very important or maps with limited animation, which are still very important in cartography today because there are still applications for them. Of course, they're still being printed. Uh, they're still going in books. They're going on websites. Uh, I have in my cartography class, my dedicated cartography class, my students design maps for Wikipedia specifically, and those are static you know, picture maps uh, that are designed to go on specific pages plus in PowerPoint presentations, oral briefings, people still use uh, digital versions of more traditional paper maps. But the point I'd like to explore here is, sure, we have this fantastic web map right here, Google Maps, which I'm sure most people have used, but most people are also probably familiar with going over here and swapping to a satellite view. So here's the satellite image. And there's a lot that we could say about satellite imagery. This is remote sensing, and I like to give uh, students an introduction to remote sensing uh, in an intro to GIS class, so we'll do that later. Uh, there's a lot that can be said about that. But, you know, most people are at least familiar with turning on the satellite view of uh, whatever area it is that they're looking for and scrolling around uh, and maybe looking for their house or looking for a park or looking for one of their favorite places. And of course this is uh, extremely valuable uh, in today's world uh, to be able to access information like this uh, very quickly. Uh, and actually I think that we underutilize this in today's world in general. But uh, We'll come back to uh, have to come back to that in a later time. But you know, we can go over here and we use it for something uh, rather trivial sometimes, like just going, "Hey, this look, it's my house." Uh, but yet, we still have uh, a use for maps, and this is a, a very important thing. That well, d aerial photography, satellite imagery, these haven't replaced the need to create dedicated maps. Oftentimes they help us create maps, but they don't, um, they don't replace it, uh, and they haven't, because uh, there are things that maps can do that satellite images can't. And so maps fulfill a very important role, and so we want to explore uh, in the next few uh, minutes what it is that a map can do for us that a uh, satellite image or an aerial photo uh, can't. Before I go to my digital chalkboard, let me just give you an example of something that we can see on a map that we can't see with an aerial photograph. I mean, what if I look up here, this is the area around the University of Illinois, and let me look up uh, Urbana, Illinois. Take a look what happens here. Now admittedly, of course, this is a web map, and I'm going to be talking in general about more static maps, but this is true of both of these. Here, when you take a look at this, here I see the boundary of the city of Urbana. Now how can I photograph the boundary of the city of Urbana? I really can't. I can't take a picture of that. There's no way that we can fly over with an airplane or a satellite and be able to determine, uh, you know, and be able to, uh, to photograph or image that boundary. Now sometimes because there are boundaries, political boundaries, there are physical things that are constructed there that give an indication that that's where the boundary is. I think a fantastic example of that is probably the boundary between North and South Korea with a demilitarized zone. When you fly over with an airplane or a satellite, over the demilitarized zone to photograph it, well, you do not see the boundary between North and South Korea, but you can certainly see the result of the boundary being there, the different defense lines and uh, the uh, sort of wilderness area that is the DMZ, 
uh, and so forth, but you can't take a photograph of that particular line. It's a social feature. The boundary between Urbana and Champaign goes right down through the campus here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. and We can take a look at uh, what happens here. Uh, move to different levels, of course. I'm just going to turn that off because I think that at some level, if I zoom in far enough, at least it used to, uh, it would go ahead and drop in that boundary, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'll go over here and look up Champagne. And we've got the boundary of that. Uh, I guess I have to actually have it searched for. But there we go. So now I've got on my boundary, or my map here, uh, a boundary that still cannot be seen. I can see where that social boundary is, but it's not something that's going to show up on satellite. Uh, I wonder how uh, Google Maps depicts that. It doesn't even show it here on the, on the satellite. Sometimes you can get the hybrid view and start overlaying. This is sort of a hybrid view right here because we can see some information about the roads overlaid. But nonetheless, that's something that we're never going to be able to pick up on uh, satellite. So uh, we have to have some type of map in order to help us out with that. Okay, let me go to my uh, digital chalkboard. Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you is the purpose of a map. Every map must have a purpose. Maps in general their purpose is to communicate information. That's first and foremost no matter what kind of map that you make or what map you're making. You have to remember that the purpose of your map is to communicate information. If it's not doing that, then it's not effective. And it also has to be communicating the right information, the information that you choose. So there's a lot of advantages to communicating information cartographically. When you map information, you can see patterns, you can see geographic distributions uh, that can give you great insights into your data that you wouldn't have otherwise if you were just looking at it as a table, for instance, and maybe a spreadsheet. So there's a lot of advantage to uh, mapping data, as long as you map it correctly, in order to communicate information. That means that when you create a specific map, every individual map is created for a purpose. Okay? And so when you begin to create a map, you never create your map without first thinking about what its purpose is. What is the purpose of your map? Specifically, what information Is it trying to communicate? And also very importantly, to who? Who is the audience of your map? Who is it that you want to have this information? In what ways do they receive information? How do they understand information? What is their level of cartographic sophistication and understanding? All of that needs to go into the correct design of the map. This is all important information for the design of the map. I think that should be to whom. To whom are you trying to communicate this information? We said that one of the advantages of a map, uh, one advantage of a map, is that you can map
non-physical or non-visible objects. I'll just put over here something about social as well. We don't have to get into uh, a lot of technicalities about what it means for them to be physical or social or material or anything like that. But we can map a lot of social, non-physical objects. Whether that's something like the boundary line between Urbana and Champaign, a political boundary like that, whether it is something like uh, the distribution of religion, population density, uh, where languages are in the world. All of those are things you can't photograph because they're not something that you can see, but you can still certainly map them. Uh, you can also use maps to draw attention to things that you want your user to pay attention to. You basically can you tailor, you custom make a map to make it easy to understand certain information. This can mean that you uh, can employ a number of different cartographic techniques. This means that some information may be omitted. You may omit some information on a map, and that's okay. Think about uh, if you're trying to create a map and its purpose is to help someone navigate the bus routes on campus. Okay, trying to get around the, the uh, campus by bus. Well, the bus routes aren't going to be something that you're going to be able to photograph anyway. So you're going to need a map that's going to show all of your bus routes. But even if, you are tr if you're trying to do this map of bus routes, it doesn't make sense to show everything about campus on the bus route map. I mean, if you take that picture, you're going to have, for instance, uh, where all of the bicycles are on campus at that time, you know, that you can see, you know, even despite the trees or whatever. But does it make any sense to put information about where the bicycles happen to be on a map that's trying to help you navigate the bus route? Well, no, it, it probably doesn't. It might not. It might even make sense to leave off the trees. Maybe you don't really need to know where the trees are on a map that is trying to help you navigate the bus, set, the bus system. So what you would do as a cartographer is emphasize the bus routes, make those very easy to read, uh, and then leave off other information about the campus. No map, no map is a perfect representation. of reality. It's a cartographic depiction, it's a cartographic interpretation. And that means that since it, it's impossible to do a map that is a perfect representation of reality, you don't want that anyway because you want to be able to emphasize certain things, you want to de-emphasize certain things. Why? For a certain purpose. You want to really know the purpose of the map that you've got in order to make sure that you're using it for that purpose. Some data may be omitted, some uh, may be simplified. Some may even be exaggerated. And that's perfectly okay as long as the user of the map is aware that it is not a perfect representation of reality, that these things may have happened to it in order to clearly communicate specific information that the cartographer was trying to convey for that certain purpose. If in the case of the bus route example, no, this is not a perfect representation of campus. It's not telling you everything that's perfect, uh, everything perfectly about the reality of campus. What it's trying to do is get you information to help you navigate the bus system quickly, effectively. If that's your purpose, then that may be the perfect map for you. It would be inappropriate to use that bus route map for a different purpose. So the cartographer 
when is, uh, he or she is putting together the map, has a lot of choices and a lot of responsibility to ensure that the information is presented correctly because there are a lot of ways that you can represent information even inadvertently wrong uh, on a map. So hopefully the cartographer knows what he or she is doing in order to best represent the, the, the data that they're trying to show. Uh, but then uh, also make sure that, uh, well, to make sure that all of those are deliberate uh, choices that have been made, they're good choices that have been made, and they accurately present the information for this keyword, the purpose of the map. So that's really why maps are still useful, because they are specifically designed to convey a certain bit of information, a certain data set, for a particular purpose and communicate it well. And maps can be exceedingly effective uh, when they are uh, made correctly in, in doing this. And even getting people to think about, uh, represent, uh, think about relationships, think about different phenomena in ways they may have never thought about it before. But you always have to remember that every map is a distortion of reality in some way. And unfortunately, that can even be done deliberately. There is a whole lot of uh, uh, material on propaganda maps, propaganda uh, cart cartography for propaganda purposes. Uh, I don't know that we'll have a lot of time to go into propaganda maps in this course, but if uh, sometimes cartography can use its techniques, uh, or cartographers can use the techniques of cartography to deliberately mislead. And uh, you have to be aware of that, and that's why it's important to be an educated consumer. So that when you look at a map and it's trying to present some data set to you in a, cer in a certain way and try to get you to draw a certain conclusion, hopefully the cartographer is honest and has had made a very deliberate decision about the choices that he or she has made in order to present you with the facts about that particular data set for that purpose as they actually occur. But maybe not. Maybe they have made some mistakes because they're not quite as cartographically literate and are just using a software package and accepting a bunch of defaults and have therefore made some mistakes and are giving you a uh, incorrect view of that data set or a misinterpretation of it. But he or she also uh, may have be trying to deliberately mislead you, use those techniques for uh, deliberately uh, misrepresent representation. And you have to be aware that that's possible and to therefore be skeptical, maybe a little bit critical about when you see a map on a blog or on a website or something that's trying to convey something to you. Uh, you have to be aware that uh, that information uh, that information that map is only available or only should be used for a certain purpose, uh, but also that there uh, may be alternative ways to display that information on a map which may present you with different conclusions or interpretations. All right, so really that's our purpose behind mapping. Uh, we will move on.